Naming organic molecules requires following a series of rules developed by the IUPAC organization. And the rules can quickly get complicated as your molecules get more complicated. In this course, we'll only be getting you to name simple molecules. But in general, regardless of how complex the molecules get, the rules tend to follow a simple pattern. The molecular names will be based around this kind of structure, with a prefix, a base, and a suffix. The base represents the longest carbon chain in the molecule. The suffix represents the type of molecule, so this can be either alkane, alkyne, alkene, or whatever the most important functional group is. The prefix is going to represent what kind of substituents are present, so this is what kind of groups are sticking off of that main chain. And again, regardless of what molecule you have, the basic structure of the name will follow this pattern. And in this video, we'll be using this structure to name alkanes. When you're naming an alkane, the most important thing to do is to check to see if the molecule is actually an alkane. And in our case, if we look at the example that's around the right-hand side of the screen, we can see that there are only single bonds, so we definitely have an alkane. Then we check to see what's the longest carbon chain. So this means the chain of carbons in a continuous row. So in this case, we have only one chain, and it is six carbons long. And because there's nothing else happening, there are no other substituents, nothing sticking off of it, it's not in a ring, it's just a straight chain of alkane, a straight chain of carbons, we're done going through the checklist. And we can name this structure. So when we look back at our basic naming structure, we can eliminate the prefix part right now because there are no substituents. So we know that our name will only contain a base and a suffix. For alkanes, the suffix is always A-N-E to represent alkanes. And the base represents the number of carbons. And to name the base, you'll just have to remember a list of Greek prefixes. There are tables of them in your textbook, and if you have something that is six carbons long, like our example, you know that you have the base name of hex, representing six. When you put the base and the suffix together, you're left with the final name, which is hexane. Our second example is only slightly more complicated, but we will need to follow more of the checklist in order to name it. First thing we do is we check if it's an alkane, and we have all single bonds, so it is definitely an alkane. The next thing we do is we find the longest carbon chain. And in this case, the longest carbon chain is still six carbons long the longest carbon chain are all the carbons within this box. Then we number the carbons. Because we have a substituent, this is actually important now. We have two ways we could number our longest carbon chain. We could start from the left, or we could start from the right. And you always start from the side that is closest to a substituent. And in this case, that means we have to start on the right. So we have a six carbon long chain, and we've started numbering on the right. Now we have to name and number our substituents. So we have one substituent, one group coming off of our carbon chain, and it is one carbon long. And again, there are tables in your textbook that have correlations between number of carbons in the substituent and the structure of its name. A one carbon long substituent is a methyl. So we have a methyl prefix, and we have to number it based on the carbon it belongs to in the longest carbon chain. So our methyl group is on the third carbon, so we put a little three with a dash in front of our prefix. So there, are, there is only one substituent, so we don't have to look at checklist number five or six, and it's not a ring, so we can ignore seven. So we have our prefix. Our base is still the same as in the last example, six carbons long, so it's a hex. So we have a three methyl hex, and our suffix is still A-N-E because we have an alkane. So we have a three methyl hexane. Our third example is even more complicated. We'll need to use more of our checklist to name this one. So again, we check if it's an alkane, and it is. 
we find the longest carbon chain. Now we have seven carbons in our longest chain. The carbons within this box represent our longest carbon chain. The third step is to number our carbons based on which side has a substituent closest to it. In our case, again, it's still the right-hand side. So we know that our base is based on the longest carbon chain with seven carbons long, so we have hept. And we know that our suffix is ane because we have an alkane. So we know that we have a substituted heptane. Now we have to name and number our substituents. Our substituents are only one carbon long, just like in our last example, which means they're both methyls. So we have a 3-methyl, and we have a 4-methyl. It would get complicated to write this out if you had lots and lots and lots of similar substituents. Uh, so what we can do is we can condense this. We can combine these substituents into a single term. So instead of saying 3-methyl, 4-methyl, we can say 3,4-dimethyl. So we acknowledge that the methyl groups are showing up on carbons 3 and 4, and we also indicate that there are two of them with the dye. And at this point, we're finished. We only have one type of substituent, methyls, so we don't have to do anything with checklist number 6 or 7. So we now have a 3,4-dimethyl, heptane. Our next example is even more complicated, but we can still follow the same type of checklist to name it. We know that it's an alkane because we have all single bonds. Now the finding the longest chain part is a little bit harder, so we have to take a moment to check. And for convenience sake, I've actually drawn it so the longest carbon chain is the same as it has been in previous examples. There are eight carbons in our longest carbon chain. If we have eight carbons in our longest carbon chain, the base name is oct, oct for eight, and ain for the alkane. So we know we have some sort of octane. It's substituted several times, so we'll have to put prefixes in front of it. And because there are prefixes, we have to number our carbons again. This time, the substituents are closest to the left-hand side. And now we name and number our substituents. We have two types of substituent, something that is one carbon long and some things that are two carbons long. We've already seen the one carbon substituent before, and it is a methyl. So we have a methyl on the carbon that is labeled number two. So we have a two methyl. The other substituents that are two carbons long have the prefix name ethyl. So we have a 4-ethyl and a 5-ethyl. And again, we can combine these into a single term. So we have two different types of prefix now. We have a methyl and an ethyl. So now we have a situation where we have more than one type of substituent, so we have to list them alphabetically. When you're listing things alphabetically, you don't use the numerical prefixes like di, tri, or tetra. Uh, you only use the name for the type of substituent you have. So we would be basing our alphabetizing on the M in methyl and the E in ethyl. So now we have to list our substituents alphabetically. So we have a 4,5-diethyl, and we have a 2-methyl. And we know that our base and suffix are oct and ane. So our overall name is 4,5-diethyl, 2-methyl octane. And we don't have a ring, so we can ignore checklist number 7. Our final example is something a little bit different. This one's visually quite different from the other examples. And it's different because we don't have one long extended chain. We have something that loops back on itself and makes a ring. So now we'll have to use the seventh point in our checklist. When you have a ring system, you have to use the cyclo prefix at some point. And it goes in between the substituent prefixes and the base name. And when you name ring structures, your base includes the ring. So you may be able to count 
one, two, three, four, five carbons in the longest chain, but in fact there are only four carbons in the longest chain because the ring is the most important part, so that's the part that we structure our base around. There are really only four carbons in this chain, so it gets a butte base. It's still all single bonds, so it's still a butane, but there is a ring structure, so it's a cyclobutane. And here we have two prefixes. Both prefixes are methyls, and they show up on the first and second carbons. It doesn't matter which number we give which methyl, because the thing is symmetrical. So this is a 1,2-dimethyl cyclobutane. 